Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned, in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament reading for today from Isaiah chapter 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I set it. This is the word of our Lord. And the epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 2. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together 
to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. This is the word of our Lord. And then the Holy Gospel from Matthew chapter 9. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. This is the gospel of our Lord. And now would you please stand again as we say together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And you may be seated for the next hymn.
grace to you and peace from God our Father, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so Pastor Steve accepted the call to Missouri in October, and his last Sunday with us was the first Sunday in November. We said at that time that we'd wait until January to begin thinking about what we are going to do. Uh, so it's January. Okay, it's time to do that. Um, when we talked about this, we said, you know, this isn't just a matter of automatically assuming that we're going to continue in the same direction. Maybe that's exactly what we want to do, but we need to think about this. We need to not just act out of rote uh, just because we've always done it that way. We need to consider. We need to think about what is happening here at St. John's. What are the things that we're good at? What kinds of things do we need to work on? Um, and we need to consider how that affects the pastoral staffing of a congregation. So that's what we're going to be doing now, um, beginning today and specifically next week. Uh, next Sunday, next Sunday, we're going to ask everyone to come at 915. Uh, we're going to meet up here in the church and uh, we're going to then break up into small groups so that everyone will have a chance to speak if they would like in answer to a survey that the elders have developed, which is also with our district, uh, a survey of 12 questions uh, and you are going to get a copy of this survey as you leave church today. Uh, you're going to get a copy. The ushers will have it. So take one of these. It's not one per family. Take one per person. That's fine. If you would like to fill it out on your own just to write in some answers, you may do that. Uh, we're going to have a box in the back next Sunday uh, for people to return these surveys. But you don't even need to write anything on here if you don't want to because the idea is that in the small group thing we're going to do next week, we're going to go over these same questions. We're going to divide probably up into seven groups uh, up here, uh, and the elders will lead those and the elders will write down the answers that people say. So you don't have to return it. We will get your responses. But we also know that some people like to talk and some people don't like to talk, okay? That's why you've got both options here. Why well, you've got both options, okay? There's questions on here about the church in general and then very specifically about associate pastor uh, kinds of things as well. So this is what you're going to get. We're giving it to you ahead of time so that you have a chance to think about it, to pray about it, to consider what your answers might be, okay? This is not what I'm going to talk about today because this is designed to be your input to the whole process. Once we get this input, a week from Sunday, next week, Monday, uh, the elders are going to be meeting and we're going to go over all of this. We're going to go over and take into account the kind of responses that you folks have said regarding the pastoral needs here at St. John's. Are we comfortable with having just one pastor? Do we want to have a second pastor? Do we want to have maybe a different kind of uh, professional staffing uh, arrangement? That's the kind of things that you can brainstorm about and think about and come back with, okay? So that's our goal. Now, what I want to do today uh, is give you some information that might be helpful as you think about this kind of stuff. Um, the kinds of things that I know the answers to and I would need to share with you. People have been asking these kinds of questions. The elders have been asking these kinds of questions. So here's some uh, information that I can share with you today that I won't have time to do next Sunday, okay? So that's how this is gonna work today. First of all, regarding this whole question, one of the first questions that always arises is how are we doing financially with all this? How are we doing financially with having to be able to support two pastors? Five years ago, we had this very same discussion. And five years ago, we pointed out that we knew that indeed when we called an associate pastor, we would run a deficit for at least three years, just using projections of how things have been going and growth and everything else like that. It would happen for at least three years, then we would probably be back on track. And we had savings to be able to cover that. So that's how come the decision was made that we should go ahead in part uh, with having an associate pastor. So what happened? What happened was, pretty much what we thought was going to happen, but it continued more. The deficit continued for longer than what we had originally anticipated. And that was due in large part to the fact that in the middle of all this, we decided to remodel this church. <laughs> and we spent a lot of money on remodeling, and people were very generous toward that, uh, so the deficits continued. So all the time that we had Pastor Steve here, we were running a deficit. Except that now, this past year, 2017, uh, 2017, because he indeed left us at the beginning of November, we actually ended up 2017 with a surplus. We had $25,000 surplus for, 
for, December, for 2017. So uh, we were very close. Uh, in fact, we, had, we ran a surplus. Even if Pastor Steve had been here all year, we, still, we would have had a surplus. So it was working. You know, we are receiving enough uh, in offerings in order to cover the expenses of two uh, pastors. I don't think that that's even an issue. I don't think it's anything that really affects much of anything. If we continue to be faithful in our stewardship, uh, God provides, and we've got some savings as well, so that I don't think it's really a big issue there, okay? Then you get the question about what about membership? What did membership do during the past five years? Our membership, our church membership basically stayed the same. Our membership today is almost exactly what it was five years ago. We've had people join, we've had births, but we've had people leave, and we've had uh, deaths as well. But it's just about the same. What about church attendance? What about church attendance? In five years, our church attendance has dropped. It has dropped during the last five years. You don't necessarily notice it because with three different services, that's how that works, okay? But five years ago, our average attendance was about 260 on a weekend. Now we're at 230 on a weekend, okay? So about five, six people per year, uh, fewer attendance. Uh, the biggest challenge that we have age-wise, you know it, it's going to be the high school, college, and 20, young 30s, that age group. That's one group that we aren't very good at, uh, that just aren't very active. We have a lot of, we have families that are. We got young people that are, but the majority of them don't. They just kind of go away. Uh, and we knew that. We said that five years ago. Uh, so nothing has really changed there uh, as well. Okay. That's some of the, the number stuff. Okay. Then... People have asked me, okay, Pastor Steve now has been gone, you know, going on three months now. How's it going with you, okay? All right, well, here I'll answer. My life since Pastor Steve left has basically been St. John's, okay? I'll be perfectly honest. I don't have much life other than St. John's uh, at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of work to do, and we've got a lot of things going on. Uh, most people don't understand what a pastor does, and I understand that very well. I don't get what a TV weatherman does during the day either, So I understand that people don't understand what a pastor does. The only time you might see me might be one hour a week, okay? So, but uh, basically, I'll, just because people ask, uh, in December, in December, from December 1st to Christmas Day, I had two days off. Uh, that was it. Uh, I did take three days off between Christmas and New Year's. We had family here, and I was able to do that. Uh, January, two days off. That's it for the entire month. There's nothing more than that. And February starting off with a bang as well, isn't it? Uh, so that's how, that's how this goes. Uh, and it's not just during the day. Um, I work almost every evening as well. Every Thursday night, I got church. Every Wednesday night, I got confirmation class. Almost every Monday night is, is meetings. And then I also have to meet with people who want to go through adult instruction. I'm meeting with people who uh, are, are getting, preparing for marriage. Uh, and then I go visit hospitals many times in the evenings uh, because I can't get there during the day. Okay, so that's, that's how this is going. Um, and again, I'm not saying that to talk for sympathy or, or to brag or anything else like that. I'm just answering the question uh, so that people know. Uh, if you don't know, you're not going to be able to respond uh, correctly. Um, one thing uh, that is going to go away uh, from my work in June will be the work of circuit visitor. Uh, that uh, is a lot of work, uh, but that my term will be ending in June, and I will not be reelected for that. Uh, someone else will be reelected for that as well. So that'll be a, a, a good thing that that's going to happen. Uh, I will tell you, however, that my name has also been put in nomination by our district nomination committee to be the secretary of our Minnesota South District. Um, uh, so my name will be on the ballot at the district convention for that. Uh, I do not in any way expect to win that. I am not well known in the district and I don't play the political games that others do and stuff like that. I'm just a name that has to be on the ballot so you have an election. Um, but even if by some fluke I were to get that, that's only four meetings per year. Uh, that's all that that one is and, uh, every three years. So that'll be a lot less uh, work than what is happening with circuit visitor work uh, as well. Okay, then the other thing uh, that comes up uh, is people ask, okay, uh, uh, Fritz, we know you're getting kind of old. <laughs> all right, they don't say it quite like that, but I know what the intent is. <laughs> <laughs> they say, well, what are your plans, okay? And I know they're talking retirement, okay? So what, what's, what's all that going to be about? Uh, and that's a legitimate question to think about. Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you, I obviously don't have an answer specifically anything yet. I'm 61. 
I'll be 62 in June. Um, I know many people think, well, when you're 65, you can retire. Uh, remember, that age changed. Uh, my, age, my retirement age, according to Social Security, is 66 and four months. Um, but the biggest issue with uh, retirement is a matter of the health insurance deal. Uh, I'll be perfectly honest. It's the same thing that many of you have to think about uh, as well. And with the messed up state of health insurance in America today, and with the big, 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 big question marks that always follow uh, everything about health insurance uh, in America in the future, uh, it, it's a great big unknown because you provide health insurance for me and for Connie. Okay? If I retire, health insurance goes away. Okay? Uh, and if I'm 65, I get Medicare. She's a little bit younger than I am, okay? Um, she doesn't hit 65 for another six and a half, seven years, okay? Uh, that's when she'll be eligible for Medicare. Uh, but prior to that, um, we, have to, we have to think about the health insurance deal, okay? So uh, I guess if you were to press me today, I would think that retirement for me would not happen at, for another at least six and a half to seven years. Uh, but that's by God's planning. I mean, I could have a stroke tomorrow and it'd be all over, you know, so everyone knows that. That's how that works. Um, but um, by God's grace, maybe that's what the planning would be. Now, I say that because some people then have been thinking, rightfully so, okay, well, when we call, if we call an associate pastor, if we call an associate pastor, would it make sense to call someone to be the new senior pastor? And you, Pastor Fritsch, become the associate pastor, uh, you know, working out your time until retirement. Um, to be perfectly honest, that would be tough. That would be tough. Uh, that would be tough for me, <laughs> knowing my personality. Uh, I've been a senior pastor here for a long time now, 17 years going on. I was also senior pastor in my previous congregation where we had an associate pastor and we had vicars and stuff like that. So that was my position uh, for me to do a different position. And I will be perfectly honest, that would be tough uh, for me. I think it would be tough for someone else coming in while well, I was still here. That kind of thing works best when you have someone coming in and uh, the senior pastor has a definite retirement date. And it's maybe within a year, okay? That can make sense, that we're gonna call a senior pastor. This guy's gonna be gone, you know, in a number of months. But when you're talking six and a half, seven years, perhaps, that's not in the ballpark. And then you gotta remember too, for instance, you call someone, uh, you don't know how long they're going to be staying anyway. You know, we call Pastor Steve, he was here in less than four and a half years. Okay, so that's how that works. So I think that isn't really much of a factor, to be perfectly honest. Um, but, you know, that's your call. It's your call. You have to think about that one uh, as well. Okay, then the matter is, what, how does this process work? I explained what we're going to be doing uh, next week so that we can gather information. Um, ultimately, though, the choice is yours. The choice will be yours. Uh, there will have to be a voters meeting. That will be called sometime whenever the elders get these things together and we, we go, understand what the direction of the congregation might be, there will be a voters meeting. Uh, a special one, this will not be waiting until May. Uh, there'll be a special voters meeting and at that voters meeting then will be, have to be made a decision what we're going to do. If the decision is we're just gonna stay with one pastor, that will be made. Then we'll know and we'll just stop the discussion. Uh, if, the if the decision is going to be we're going to call a pastor, that is what you as a congregation have to decide. That is not my call. It is not the call of the elders. It is not the call of the board of directors. It is the call of the congregation. So it becomes your responsibility and privilege to be able to make that decision. And you will be making that decision. So that's why this is important, this whole process of considering uh, what we're going to do. If indeed we are going to decide to call a pastor again, an associate pastor again, then we also have to talk about what are the job descriptions going to be. That's part of the discussion for, your, for next week. Uh, if we call an associate pastor, what would you like Pastor Fritsch to continue to emphasize or to do specifically? What would you like an associate pastor to do? The kind of things that Fritsch doesn't do so great, okay? Uh, you know, and other kinds of things. That, what kind, but we have to have a job description. You have to have that figured out. You know, you gotta know. We did this five years ago. When we decided to call an associate pastor, we had the job descriptions already uh, figured out, uh, and then they were approved by you. So that when we make application then through the district president, he can look at those job descriptions and know exactly what we're looking for. Because this is how it works. 
If we decide to call the associate pastor uh, and there is a job description, then the first thing is that you as a congregation, individual members, will have the chance to nominate people that you might know, pastors that you might know from other congregations uh, to be added to our call list. Okay, we take about two to three weeks time to do that. Once we get those names, and congregations usually end up giving four or five names, sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less, whatever. Uh, Then we give the job descriptions, we give those names to the district president. The district president then goes over all the names that he's got as people who are possibly able to consider a call at this time. And he tries to match up, tries to match up what we would be looking for an associate pastor with the names of the people uh, that he knows, okay? That takes a while, that takes a while. Uh, And then, because he's gotta do that for lots of different congregations. We got over 20 congregations that are calling pastors at the moment, so that's a lot of lists to have to deal with, okay? Uh, So uh, he'll come back uh, and he'll, he'll eventually have a list for us a list of whatever, 15, 18, 19, 20, 25 names, uh, something like that. Then a call committee, which will be appointed by our congregational president and approved by the board of directors. The call committee will receive those names, go over all the information that is supplied. There's about 12 pages of information uh, that is supplied on each pastor. Then they go over all those names and if they decide, then they also telephone people or interview them some way to get more information. Finally, eventually coming to the point of saying, okay, we've got two, three, four names that we believe would be good pastors for St. John's. Uh, Then they bring those to the congregation. Again, the congregation meets in a special voters meeting, goes over the information, and makes the choice. Okay? That's how the process works. After the call has been made, after you make a decision, then that pastor gets notified, and he has the chance to consider that call, just like Pastor Steve had the call for about a month before he made a decision. The decision obviously can be yes, the decision can be made, can be, can be no. Uh, Pastor Steve did a no and a yes, okay? So we, ha- we get how that works. If it's a yes, great. Then we, can, then we schedule an installation service and we, and we move on from there. Uh, if the answer is no, then, well, the call committee goes back to the list and says, okay, let's look at this again. Where is God leading us, okay? We had already told you that uh, really the option of getting a seminary graduate is not available. Um, and that's the reason we waited until January to do this because this year there are fewer seminary graduates uh, than there ever have been. Next year there will be even fewer yet. Uh, the number of churches last year that wanted seminary graduates that did not get them was over 60. 60 congregations called seminary graduates last year and didn't get them. Uh, this year they're saying, you know, the chances are, are not that very great. Some will get them, but they already have more congregations already. There already are more congregations calling seminary graduates than there are graduates even available. Uh, so we're, that's really not part of the process at the moment. Uh, we, we have to go the other direction, okay? All right, then one other thing, timing. And this really gets into kind of the sermon part. I apologize, so far this has just been information. It hasn't been much of a sermon at all. Uh, at the seminary, they would shoot me for this one, okay? But I... <laughs> I got to tell you this information because it's critical to, to next week. Okay, so I apologize. But here, get more sermon type stuff, sermon type stuff. This is the Lord's church. It always has been. It's been that way for 150 years. For 150 years, he's brought lay people like you to this congregation. And he has brought pastors to this congregation as well. He is the one who has brought pastors and people together so that in this place his work is done. The timing, therefore, on this whole deal is God's timing. We do our very best, okay? We work diligently, we proceed with the process and so on, but we don't get discouraged at how long it takes because believe me, it takes a while. At the very best, at the very best from where we're at now, and I, and I know how things work, we're looking at the very best that we would have someone here next fall, okay? It, it, that's just how this works. Uh, and it could be later. It can be later. And if you call someone and they say no, you add another four months. Add another four months before another one. Uh, you know that. If you remember, it's been a while, I've been here long enough already, but you remember that before I came, it was over two and a half years 
uh, when you didn't have a pastor uh, before I finally came. But that's an interesting point as well with this whole timing deal. With this whole timing deal, we have to be ready to say, God, your will be done in your timing. And the perfect example is what happened after I had gotten here. When after I'd gotten here and had been here for a while, a number of people had said to me, I wish we had called you earlier. I said, if you had called me earlier, my answer would have been no. It was not the time for me to come earlier than when you actually called. There was too much going on at my other congregation. I was committed and had to stay for their, for their sake. It was not the good time for my family. But when you called, when you did, and it took you that long to get to my name because God put you through a whole bunch of other names first, knowing very well that I was going to be here, he wanted me here, but it was only going to happen at this time because of what was also going on in Berrien Springs and going on with my family life as well. Then when that time came, you happened to be following God's will, and you responded, and you called, and I said yes. Okay? That's how this works. That's how this works. So I never worry about timing regarding the Lord's call process, because God brings his people together when he is able to bring them together. That's the important part about this process. It's about trust. It's about really believing that this God that we profess is indeed caring for us, and really wanting what is best for us. That's why this is the most important thing at the moment. In this whole call process, right there. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send workers into his harvest field. This whole thing is about prayer. Prayer does two different things. Prayer obviously brings the request before God, and then God hears those prayers and he responds. There's that incredible Bible passage that says you don't have because you don't ask. That's something to think about. That's something to think about. God promises to bless us when we come to him and ask. Okay? So we need to be asking. I'm not just saying this as as me as a pastor in front of church. I'm talking about each of you individually. In your prayers, you should be praying now for St. John's. And you should be praying very specifically for wisdom and guidance and whatever our decision is going to be regarding pastoral staffing here. God says pray. Pray. So... It, bring, it opens up God's grace when we pray, but it also makes us more faithful. Because every time we pray, we acknowledge, this isn't my church, God. This is yours. This isn't about my desires or my wishes. This is about your incredible plan. This is all about what you want God done, dear God. That's the most significant thing. And when you stop and think about what he wants done and what we see happening right here in this place, and I mean literally within these walls here in Stewartville, Minnesota, how God has brought together a place where people can hear the most blessed thing that they will ever, ever hear in their entire life, that they are dearly loved by God, that Jesus died for them, and that through faith in him, you got life. Okay? Now just think, we just had, going to have now, four funerals in two weeks, okay? And over the years, many years, Barb and Francis and Larry and Pearl came to this place right here. Here's where they heard God's word. Here's where they studied in Holy Scripture. Here's where they came and they knelt and they received the very body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And today they're in heaven. That's how important this is. And it really emphasizes very specifically, this is God's work. God is doing an incredible thing in this place. He is rescuing people from the deadly results of sin. To make it through this world and to live forever with him in heaven. This is all about his work in this place. It's not about me. And it's not about any other associate pastor that we call. And no, it's not even about you. It's for you. It's for you. This is a blessed place. We have our struggles. We wish things could be going better sometimes. 
but it is God in his wondrous love that deigns still to be with us and to work with us right here so we can have life. Life in its fullness and life forever with him. How dark would our lives be if we didn't have St. John's? How poor would they be if we didn't have our Savior right beside our side here in this place? That's why it's an exciting time. It's always exciting because it's God at work. And if we can open up our eyes and see that, and if we can open our hearts and our faith, and we can say, Lord, your will be done, he will say, oh, you don't know how well that's going to be for you forever. So we continue on. In God's arms, supported by him, blessed by him, and indeed living with him forever. Amen. And the peace of God is past understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers today, we will indeed pray again for the family of Larry Gilbert. Uh, Joyce is here today uh, as he is now with his Lord in heaven. We'll say a similar prayer for the family of Pearl Hanke uh, as she is now with her Lord as well. We're also going to uh, say prayers of thanksgiving. Uh, first of all, for Stephen Amanda Sendelbach, uh, that is Amanda Welter, you better know her as. Uh, she had a baby, they, Stephen Amanda, had a baby daughter. Uh, this past Tuesday, uh, Ray Jean, Ray, R-E-Y, Ray Jean Sendelbach, uh, born in Maryland, that's where they live. Uh, that is uh, second granddaughter then to Randy and Myrna Welter. And then we also heard this morning uh, that uh, Brian and Jen Guderian, uh, Jen is um, <clears throat> Bruce and Kay Narvison's daughter, uh, are in the process uh, of adopting a baby boy uh, right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, they live in Hawaii, but they are now uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, they have uh, Shane, six-month-old Shane, in their possession, their custody, uh, with them at the hotel. Paperwork has been signed. Uh, they just have to make sure that the process plays out absolutely 100% legally so that uh, Shane will be theirs uh, from this moment on. Uh, so we rejoice with them as well. And then uh, regarding health concerns, um, updates, uh, Doug Fine is doing much better. He still has to have the, um, the infusion of the antibiotic for the infection that he has, uh, but he's doing okay. Uh, Amy Mirvold is doing well. Dick Laux uh, is continuing to make progress, still having to wear the brace, but doing well. And then the other people that are receiving cancer treatments, we haven't heard anything new about those uh, either. Would you please stand for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, this is your church. How blessed we are to be here in this place. How blessed we are that you have brought us together around your word and sacraments to be assured of your great love and forgiven of our sins and made heirs of everlasting life. We thank you for the ministry that you provided here in this place, the great things that we can do when we work together beneath your grace, receiving your blessing, one gift after another. And now as we as a congregation very specifically are considering the pastoral staffing needs of our congregation, we pray that you give us the Holy Spirit to give us insight and direction, and most especially the faith that trusts you to do exactly what you want to have accomplished here in this place. Therefore, we commit ourselves into your hands, and we ask that you do all things according to your will and that that will we are confident will be our everlasting joy we also uh, give a prayer of thanksgiving today uh, for Steve and Amanda as they celebrate the birth of Ray Jean uh, we are very grateful that she has been brought into this world and pray that you'll bless them uh, with every good gift and that you'll bring her soon to the sacrament of holy baptism wherein she can be born again we also rejoice with um, Jen and Brian as they are in this process of adoption and are so very, very close to, to being able to take Shane home with them to, to Hawaii once again. We pray that you'll bless them, that you'll make the process be completed, all the T's crossed and the I's dotted and everything done and it be final and they can indeed rejoice in this new family that they have, a new family in which they can share your great love with Shane. We also ask, dear God, that you bless the families of those who passed away uh, recently. We pray for the family of Larry Gilbert, uh, most especially Joyce and Scott and Doug and Steve and their families. We truly pray that you bless them with the confidence that you, dear Jesus, have conquered death and you have indeed brought life to Larry and that they may indeed find in you their source of peace and consolation. 
We pray the same for the family of Francis Jansen, as well as for Pearl Hinkey. We commend them all into your care and keeping, asking that by your grace you embrace them with your love and help them in these challenging and difficult days to find in you the peace that only you can give, the peace that comes with knowing that sins have been forgiven and that life is the internal inheritance of all who believe. We pray today for the many, many people who have the flu as it goes around our country, sometimes indeed taking people's lives. We pray that you indeed cause this uh, epidemic to subside, that people to be getting well, that you bless the medical people who tend to those who are afflicted, that they can indeed work your healing upon their bodies. Continue to bless Doug Fine, Amy Mirvold, Dick Laux as they continue to recover uh, from their issues. We are grateful that they are all making good progress. And then be also with Lyndon Luke and Lisa Varenkamp, Adelia Norgrant, Angela Lewis as they are receiving treatments for cancer. Indeed, dear God, work your healing upon their bodies and restore them to good health. And we finally pray for Norm Schultz as he continues to receive hospice care. May the care that he has provided truly make him comfortable as he lives his days in your wondrous wondrous, peaceful arms. We pray all this, dear Jesus, in your name. Amen. You may be seated. The offering is going to be received. We are celebrating Holy Communion today, so do check your communion attendance as well. Thank you. And please stand for the preface to Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And now we praise you that you sent us your only begotten Son, and that in him, being found in fashion as a man, you manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that he may establish in us a living faith and prepare us to joyfully remember our Redeemer and receive him who comes to us in his body and blood. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. please stand for the dismissal. Now may this body which was given for you and this blood which was shed for you strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom which comes down from above, that your word may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy name, so that in steadfast faith we may serve you and in confession of your name abide to the end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit are one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon your favor and give you peace. Amen.
thank you so much for joining us. Sunday School and Bible class in about 15 minutes. And then don't forget, come back at 1130. Go in peace.